evening again, uh, great Zion and friends, and thank you for joining us again for our weekly uh, Bible study. Uh, thank God for you, and thank God for your presence on tonight. Those of you who are watching us via uh, our website, greaterzionhouston.org, we thank you so much. Also, uh, you can watch us on YouTube. We thank you for uh, viewing us. Uh, let me take this opportunity to say thank you to the wonderful members of the Greater Zion Church who, during the midst of this uh, pandemic and crisis, thought enough of me to uh, send me a number of birthday cards and well wishes and, uh, and some wonderful tangible gifts. So I wanted to thank uh, the members of Greater Zion for that. Um, tomorrow I'll be celebrating uh, my 53rd birthday. So thank you so much for, for loving and caring. Uh, about me to do that. I know these are challenging and tough times and just to, to show your thoughtfulness is very much appreciated and I want to thank you uh, for that. Uh, we are continuing in our series of lessons uh, dealing with the parables of Jesus Christ and uh, we've been spending uh, quite a few uh, weeks in the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 15. Uh, those of you who are regulars for our Bible study and prayer meeting uh, when we're not uh, under quarantine, know that uh, we can spend a number of weeks on sometimes one or two scriptures. So we are still in the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 15, and we are going to resume our discussion uh, regarding the prodigal son. And uh, we left off uh, with uh, part uh, one uh, and uh, really part one and part two of the journey of discovery of this, this young man. And so today we're going to pick up uh, where we left off. If you have your Bibles, uh, we're going to look at Luke chapter 15 tonight. We'll uh, focus uh, our uh, thoughts on verses 13, oh, probably to maybe verse 18. And uh, we'll try to pick up the rest on the next time. So Luke chapter 15, beginning with verse 13. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the field to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before thee, uh, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. All right, we read uh, through verse, verse 19. Uh, so we want to continue with our uh, lesson regarding uh, this prodigal son. Uh, one of the things that we shared in our previous two lessons and we've discussed is uh, the first uh, aspect of rebellion, uh, then repentance and, uh, uh, and rejoicing and forgiving will be those areas in which uh, we want to focus on. We dealt with uh, uh, rebellion uh, partly on uh, the last lesson. And so I want to finish up with rebellion and then move to uh, repentance. Uh, so let's, let's, let's delve into the discussion uh, for tonight. You know, we are always headed uh, for trouble whenever we value things more than people. We're always headed for trouble when we value pleasure uh, more than duty. Uh, we're always headed for trouble when we value distant scenes more than the blessings uh, that we have uh, right, at, right at home. The prodigal son learned the hard way that you cannot enjoy the things money can buy if you ignore the things that money cannot buy. You cannot enjoy the things that money can buy if you ignore 
the things that money cannot buy. So I want to I I pick up with that and want to follow that train of thought as we work our way uh, through this lesson. I want to look at verse 13. It says, and not many days after, that's after he went to his father and asked his father for the portion of goods that fall to him. So after his father had given him uh, his portion or uh, his inheritance, it says, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Verse 13 says he went to a, a far country, uh, the far country. Uh, it's not necessarily a, a distant place to which uh, you and I travel because the far country exists first in our hearts. And so as we look at this through the lens of it being an, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, let's always try to find the practical applications for us. Uh, this younger son, he dreamed uh, of enjoying his freedom uh, 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 far from uh, home and away from his father and his older brother. Uh, if the sheep, when we first started our discussion of three parables in Luke chapter 15, if the sheep was lost through foolishness, and if the coin was lost through carelessness, then this son was lost because of willfulness. He, he wanted uh, to go away. He wanted to go out and, uh, and enjoy uh, 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 life uh, to the fullest. Uh, nothing wrong with wanting to spread your wings. Nothing wrong with uh, a child wanting to leave home. But look at the dynamics from which he left. He wanted to go away so that he could, as the story lays out, he could have a good time. Uh, he wanted to have his own way. So, so he rebelled against his own father and, and broke uh, his father's heart. Uh, he, 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 he went to a far country. And, and life in the far country, uh, we find out from the progression of the text, uh, was not what he expected. Uh, his resources ran out because he said he wasted his substance with riotous living. He wasted his substance, verse 13 says, with riotous living. Uh, that riotous living means loose living, reckless living, wild living, uh, extravagant uh, living. Uh, he, he, he went out with all of his inheritance and he just uh, carelessly spent it. Uh, he caroused in forbidden beds. I mean, he, he, every, every sensual uh, lust of the flesh that he could uh, indulge himself in, uh, that's included in that riotous living. Uh, uh, he, he allowed himself to fall victim to drunkenness. Uh, he was loose living. Uh, matter of fact, he probably, uh, words came out of his mouth away from home that he would never say at home. Uh, he probably uh, uh, got to the point where uh, he, he ate himself uh, silly. He, he, he participated in gluttonous eating and drinking and partying. Uh, he even uh, found himself perhaps maybe dressing to attract uh, attention to himself or to attract the opposite sex. Uh, he had a, a foul mouth. All of those things were wrapped up in this, this uh, connotation on this ideal of riotous living. And what happened as he fell victim to this riotous living is that his resources ran out. Uh, his friends left him. And then on top of all of that, it says a famine came to the land. Uh, the boy was forced to do for a stranger what he would not do for his own father. And that was to go to work. <laughs> and so here he is. The scene in this drama is, is really our Lord's way or Jesus' way of emphasizing what sin really does in the lives of those who reject the Father's will. Uh, sin promises freedom, uh, but it only brings slavery. I want to look at a couple of passages of Scripture. John chapter 8, verse 34 Real quickly, John 8 and 34 says, Jesus answered them, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
Whosoever committed sin is the servant to sin. See, sin promises freedom, but it only brings us slavery. Sin promises us success, but it brings failure. Sin promises us life, but Romans chapter three verse uh, Romans chapter six verse twenty three says that the wages of sin is is death. This boy thought he would find himself, but he only lost himself. Uh, when God is left out of our lives, uh, enjoyment becomes enslavement. Uh, let, let me say this, and I know we're dealing with this young man, and it'd be easy for us, uh, if this was a youth uh, type setting, to talk about, uh, talk to our youth, and I think on last lesson I mentioned the youth, but listen, let me tell you something, uh, not only to our young people, but also for some of our older people, uh, this world is cold and heartless, uh, and, 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 and it's important for you to understand this that you can't afford to wrap yourself up in the pleasures and the security of this world. Because if you do, you will end up empty, you'll end up alone, and you'll end up destitute. Uh, the world is cruel. And that's what this far country represents for this young man. It represents the world, a world totally different than what he had experienced at home. This, this world was cruel that he went into and vicious and murderous at heart. This world that he ventured into and this world that is out there has no mercy and doesn't know what pity is. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And the world will kill you, it won't even attend your funeral, and it won't give you a dime for your burial. So, so, so this, this young man went into a far country, wasted his substance with riotous living, and then, it says, a famine broke out. He took no thought for tomorrow. He didn't think about uh, anything other than what he was doing at that time. And he wasted his substance. All that his father had amassed that he had then given to him, he wasted all of his substance. Now, there's something deeper in life than things. There's, there's more to life than, than fine cars and fine clothes. There, there, there's something in life that's more valuable than fur coats and, and other expensive clothes and, and dazzling diamonds. There is joy that's to be found in Jesus uh, rather than, than, than to hang out at the hangout spot or at the trap house. There is more to give uh, 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 to life than a warped mind, and there's more to hand over to God than a wrecked life and a worn out body. And some people will waste their lives living for self and living for the pleasures of sin and this world, and then come to God broken down, worn out, and say, I want to give my life to the Lord. You wasted it with the devil. And now you come and want to give yourself to the Lord. Listen, God will accept you, but how much more usefulness you could be for the Lord if you gave yourself to him when you had strength and energy and vigor and vitality. Don't allow yourself to waste the productive years of your mind and your body, your gifts and your talents to the world that will bleed you and take from you and forget about serving and giving your best to God. You ought to give God some glory. You ought to give God some of the talent that he's blessed you with in the usefulness of helping someone and being a benefit to the kingdom of God. Listen, listen, he, 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 he wasted his substance. And I have to tell you, there's more uh, in life to enjoy than just a few dollars. And some people are living uh, to make money and more money, and it seems as if money never satisfies. But there is more in life to enjoy than a few dollars. And some of us, the sad reality, have come to that realization during this time of pandemic and quarantine that we have come to realize 
what things are really important and what things are really valuable. And I'll tell you, for me, my relationship with God is valuable and my relationship with my loved ones and my family is valuable. All these other things that before this quarantine and before uh, uh, this pandemic that we felt that we could not do without that we could not survive, that we didn't have an opportunity to go enjoy going out, going out to eat, going to the movies, going to engage in other activities, going to sporting events. But listen, now that all of that has been restricted, we find out the things that are really important. And I know that it might be frustrating and, and, and nerve wracking to spend days upon days and weeks now, almost 60 days, uh, some in the house on quarantine with your family and your children, but I, I bet you it has helped you develop a closer relationship with your family, a closer relationship hopefully with your job, with your, with your, your relationship with God, and hopefully a closer relationship with how you take care of yourself. And many of you have the benefit that to, to your job has allowed you to work from home, but then there's some who don't have a job, and uh, but but you need to know that life consists of more than the abundance of things that you possess. You need to make sure that you're you're in the hands of God and that He possesses He possesses you, because the Scripture says, "What will it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul?" But still, there are those who will, who will stop at nothing like this son, spend all, they'll spend all. They spend all of their money, all of their clothes, all of their family uh, relationships. They'll spend those good relationships. They'll spend all of, uh, 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 of the things in their house and their furniture. They'll waste it all. They'll pawn it all. Some will stop at nothing until they spend it all. Uh, they'll waste their money on a job. Uh, they'll waste their good mind. They'll waste their health, their health and strength. They'll waste uh, the usefulness of their manhood and their womanhood, all of their energy, all of their ambition, and all of their reputation. Some will not stop until they have, like this young boy did, this prodigal son did, until they have spent all. They've spent all. And then, then listen, the sad truth is that some will not stop at nothing until all is spent. You know, some of us uh, uh, hopefully have a governor, but some people, uh, once they get going, that's why, you know, you, you'll see uh, 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 billboards, uh, uh, Gamblers Anonymous, you know, if you have problems with gambling, Alcoholic Anonymous, uh, Cocaine Anonymous, uh, all of those things, because some people uh, will stop at nothing until they spent it all and wasted it all. Uh, pleading won't stop it. Begging won't stop it. Coaxing them won't stop it. Counseling won't stop them. Praying for them where they can hear you pray only irritates them. Telling them about Jesus makes them mad. Telling them about God's love for them falls on deaf ears. And asking them to go to church calls for an argument. Hmm. And it's sad to have to go from rags to riches like this young man did, from plenty to poverty, from much to none, and have to go from a lot to nothing. And it's pitiful to have to go from the palace where, where he was when he lived with his father, the palace, and then end up in the pit pen. He went from uh, being a, 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 a lord of his father's uh, kingdom and his father's uh, estate to being a loaf. He went from being a noble man to a bum, from a gentleman to a beggar. And it's sad to see someone go from having money to bumming and begging. He went from a nice home to a flop house, and from fame to shame. And it's sad to have to go from food and we see in this text to famish. And yet some people will stop at nothing till all is spent. And this young boy couldn't control himself. Couldn't control himself. He 
wasted all of his stuff. He didn't know how to stop. He didn't know how to say no. How miserable it must be to spend everything and ride to the limit, spend the rest of your days with regret and have nothing. How pitiful it is to see one lie on a sick bed and literally ride in the bed because of riotous living. I've seen many who swore that they would not go inside a church nor give the church a dime, but many have had to crawl up to the church and beg for food medicine, clothes, money to pay rent, light, and gas bills. We've even had to bury many who wouldn't darken the doors of the church when they were on their feet. But rags and ruin, wretchedness and poverty, and mental breakdowns and early grave are inevitable lots to all those who waste their lives in riotousness. And I thank God for the church that we will say, you bring your destitute, your hungry, your in fact, Jesus said, what you've done to the least, you've done unto me. And it's good that they would have a place to go to. But it would be so much better if people would live their lives in such a way that they wouldn't get in the shape that this young boy found himself in. But see, that's part of the lesson that Jesus wants to share with us, is that rebellion can happen to any of us. And, and all of us have a rebellious spirit and rebellious tendency in it. But the good news is that there is hope even after you've been rebellious. The hope is that the hope of repentance is that you can one day come to yourself. It says when he spent off, when all was spent, his popularity vanished. See that? He spent all his popularity gone. Friends, he joined himself. Huh? Friends, huh? People that were around him. When all was spent, his popularity vanished. When all is spent, friends will leave. When all is spent, nobody's going to send you an invitation. Nobody's going to extend you an invitation. When all is spent, wild parties are not yours to enjoy. When all is spent, no consideration is given to you. When all is spent, no pity is shown and no sympathy is expressed. When all is spent, no helping hand is extended and frequent visitors, they come no more. When all is spent, there's no friendly smile to behold and no kind hands to shake. When all is spent, there comes no cordial welcomers and there's no kind words to hear. When all is spent, no love is shared and the world turns dark and cold. When all is spent, the once idolized becomes a bum. The once praised becomes a scorn. When all is spent, life becomes a nightmare. Huh? And buddies run away. And there's no voices uh, from them to hear. When all is spent, you see this young man body that suffers hunger and eviction notices appear. When all is spent, the flop house becomes home and the garbage can becomes a dining room. When all is spent, look at the sex. Grunting hogs and squealing pigs become company keepers and the hog pen becomes a setting room. When all is spent, drinking partners refuse to give you a drink and hot girls pass you by. When all is spent, no one says, I'm glad to see you. When all is spent, and here's where this boy was, shame takes over. Let's get to verse 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in mourning. This is where this boy was in our text. He went too far, too fast, and he stayed too long, and he spent too much. He went too far, too fast, he stayed too long, and he spent too much. The Bible says when he had spun off, he began to be in want, and no man gave unto him. Want always follows waste. Retribution always follows uh, riotousness. This young man, having gone too far, 
lived too fast, stayed too long, and spent too much, desperately needed some help. And then we get to verse 15. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the field to feed swine. You see that in verse 15? He was so down and out that he took a job feeding swine or hogs and pigs. We said this was a good Jewish boy who had no dealing with swine and split hoof animals and pigs. And he sat there by the hog pen, hungry, raggedy, dirty, penniless, friendless, homeless, and alone. He sat there and shed tears, no doubt, of regret for his mistakes because he left home rich but now he was poor. He left home with money <laughs> but now he was broke. He left home with clothes but now he was naked. He had nothing. And he sat there helpless and almost he sat there and he thought about his waywardness. He thought about his wandering from home. He thought about his own misery and his own sad plight, which he knew he brought upon himself. And then look, verse 16, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave. Oh, but this boy recognized something. Look at verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? When he got to the bottom, when he lost it all, when he spent it all, when he was helpless and almost hopeless. Verse 17 says, he came to himself. To repent, and now we're going to talk about repentance. To repent means to change one's mind. And that's exactly what this young man did as he cared for the people. <laughs> he came to himself. Which suggests that up to this point, he'd not really been himself. Because he said he came to himself. So all of that riotous living, all of that uh, 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 debauchery, it was not him. Because it said, and he came to himself. Because he's not in himself. There is an insanity in sin that seems to paralyze the image of God within us and liberates the animal inside. Let me say that again. There is an insanity in sin that seems to paralyze the image of God within us and liberates the animal inside. Students of Shakespeare like to contrast two quotations that describe uh, this contradiction of man's nature. Uh, one is found in Hamlet, Hamlet 2. What a piece of work is a man how noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form, in moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. <laughs> and then here's the contradiction found in Merchant of Venice. When he is best, he is a little worse than a man. And when he is worse, Insanity in sin seems to paralyze the image of God within us and liberates the animal inside. But thanks be to God, it says he came to himself. And having come to himself, he thought about his father <laughs> and the servants of his father, which had bread enough to spare. And this young man changed his mind about himself and his situation, and he admitted. He confessed that his father was a generous man and that even uh, being in the service at home and being a servant at home 
was far better than freedom in a far country. It's God's goodness, not just man's badness, that leads us to the end. This father represents God. I want, I want to give you a scripture, Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Or despise, or despise it thou the rich of his goodness, and forbearance the long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. It's the goodness of God, not just man's badness, that leads us to repentance. Oh God, God is available and ready eager to accept us back into himself if we repent, turn from sin and turn to him. If this boy had thought only about himself and his hunger and his homelessness, his homesickness, his loneliness, he would have, he would have still been in despair. But his painful circumstances helped him to see his father in a new way. Because he, 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 he took the focus off of him being hungry and homesick and lonely. Because if he just focused about himself, he would have been even in more despair. And woe is me. But instead, in the midst of his painful circumstances, it helped him to see his father in a new way. And this brought him some hope. Because he said, if my father is so good to serve, Maybe he'll be willing to forgive us. <laughs> look at verse 18. Let's go back and look at verse 18. I will rise, the young man said, and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. Stop there, the boy would have just experienced regret and remorse. But look at what verse 18 says. <laughs> I'm, I could be, I'm, I'm going to stop thinking about what's, what I'm missing. And I'm going to get up and I'm going to do something about it. That's what true repentance is. Repentance involves the will as well as the mind and the he says, I will arise, and I will go, and I will say, huh? repentance. Our resolutions may be notable, but, but unless we act on them, they can never of themselves bring about permanent good. That's why I'm to make resolutions. No, no, don't make a resolution. Just, just repent and say, God, I, I will rise, I'll go. If repentance is truly the work of God, which Acts chapter 11, verse 18, and it's worth us looking at that, Acts chapter 11, verse 18. It says, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, then hath God also uh, to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Sinner, if you truly repent, May God, he'll give you the saving grace of Jesus Christ. The young man arose. He started his long journey to his father's house. He was ragged, but he went home. He was dirty, but he went home. He was broke, but he went home. He was hungry, but he went home. He was physically weak. He was ashamed to see his friends and his family, but he went home. It's a good place to start tonight. And uh, there's a song that speaks to where this young man is, a hymnal, Baptist hymnal, softly and tenderly. It says, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. 
see on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh sinner, come home. If you're watching this tonight, you strayed away from God. You can come back to him. You can repent and turn from the direction in which you travel and turn to God and say, God, I want to, I want to make a new start. I want to be better than I was before. And if you trust him and commit yourself to him, God will give you and accept you back. And he'll restore you. God bless you tonight. I hope that we've said something that has been an inspiration and a help to you. We'll pick up and we'll talk about this father on the, the next time. We'll still be in Luke chapter 15. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for another expression of your love. Thank you for your word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for ears that have heard we pray for minds that will receive and hearts that will uh, operate in the knowledge of your word. Lord, we thank you today for where you have us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we're in the right place at the right time to experience your word. So, Lord, thank you. We pray, O oh, Heavenly Father, for the condition of our world. We pray, O oh, Heavenly Father, for the leaders of our country, and our state, our city. Lord, we pray for wisdom to abound. Pray for Christian men and women of goodwill. Continue to pray. Do those things that help uh, us make it through uh, this pandemic. Lord, thank you for those who are on the front lines. Doctors, firefighters, police, men and women. Those who are working in the grocery stores. Those who are janitors cleaning up. Lord, we just thank you. Keep us safe, Lord. We pray for those who have lost love. Lord, we know that when this has passed, we pray for a great revival that people will come back to you and love you and serve you in a real way. We thank you and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a reminder to our church members on this Sunday, uh, first Sunday in May, again, we'll have drive through Lord's Supper. Please join us on the campus of the Greater Zion Church, 3202 Truly Avenue. Uh, we will serve you Lord's Supper. Uh, stay in your vehicles. Be sure that you come with your mask on uh, and uh, we'll be practicing social distancing to our members uh, who would like uh, to bring your tithes on that Sunday. You can bring your tithes. We will have envelopes available for you. Those of you who are watching can still give through Giveify on the website, Greater Zion Baptist Church on Truly. And you can always mail your contributions to our church address, 3202 Truly Avenue, Houston, Texas, 77004. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Good night and God bless you.